Welcome to Alabama Care, everybody. My name is Sarah Williams, and today I have Philip Meadows with me. Philip, if you would introduce yourself while I pull up the broadcast. Hey, everybody. My name is Philip Meadows. I am 51 years old, I'm living independently with uh, spina bifida, and uh, glad to be on the program. Yeah, close, and I think I did it again. Hmm. Oh, nope, there it is. Never mind. Saw it. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so I actually have two questions and one I sent you one I did not so okay. when people first come to Alabama first question they're always asked whether they're living there on vacation or whatever Auburn or Alabama oh gosh that's a sit-up isn't it <laughs> no answer um, it wisely <laughs> yeah <laughs> Alabama all the way absolutely not <laughs> Okay, maybe you can redeem yourself on this one. <laughs> What's your favorite song? <laughs> maybe. Oh, uh, well, I'm uh, I'm kind of an old soul. If you remember a, uh, um, or if you've ever heard the uh, early '80s, late '70s song "Piano Man" by uh, Billy Joel. That's uh, I, I, that's I have. I love that song. You redeemed yourself. That, that's probably <laughs> my favorite song. <laughs> um, let's see okay what is spina bifida in your own words well the best way i describe it to people that are unfamiliar with it it's uh, basically a spinal cord injury um from birth um if you uh if you know um people that uh, have spinal cord injuries from due to um, accidents or illness um, during life. Um, for me, the way I've always uh, uh, explained it in the simplest terms, it's uh, a spinal cord injury from birth, those around the spinal column resulting in uh, injury. And uh, depending on on the location of the injury uh, kind of determines the severity of the of the uh, disability. Do you know what um, level you are? Um, I don't actually. Me neither. <laughs> um, um, mine's probably. Uh, mid to lower back yeah i um uh, i don't know if that's long i interviewed someone the other day and they knew and so now i just ask it because i think it's interesting when people actually know because i've never known yeah i guess i guess you'd call mine lumbar i don't i'm I, I guess that's the technical um the medical term for the location yeah see okay so tell me about your early life what's fun about the like school and your activities and like home life and all that well let's see um i uh went to um a place called the children's center um for preschool um where they uh um i get they had a, other children with disabilities now was able to get acclimated into that environment. Um, but then I started, started kindergarten normally and started, um, started uh, mainstream school, um, grade school here in Montgomery and on up through, um, I guess it was junior high back when I was in school. It's middle school now um, into high school and then uh, 
to college. So I was pretty much mainstream school um, all the way through. Um, nothing, nothing different for my schooling when, um, as far as spina bifida or any other uh, special uh, schooling or arrangements um, were made. So uh, pretty normal upbringing relative to that. To that. Um, when I was younger, I walked on crutches um, mm -hmm. and uh, got along pretty well. Um, you know, stairs were a problem sometimes. But uh, other than that, um, I walked on crutches up until I was about 27 and uh, got along fairly well. Um, no real problems getting around, no real problems um, relationship wise with other kids. Uh, or with other young adults, and uh, it was a pretty normal upbringing. Um, lived with my parents for uh, uh, longer than um, I guess society would consider normal, but right. um, but they were. It was it was uh, good for me. They were able to help me with with things that uh, that I needed help with, and help me get on my feet financially, and help me get on my feet uh, uh, as far as. Uh, uh, learning things and being able to uh, function as a late teenager, young adult, and uh, and then eventually move out. Cool. Yeah, I was. I went to. Well, I went to public school first through fifth, mm -hmm. kindergarten through fifth. Sorry, and then um, was homeschooled sixth through twelfth. Oh, okay. Was that all here in Alabama? No, uh, kindergarten through fifth was in Georgia. Okay. And then sixth through 12th was in Alabama. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. No, I, and I'm I, also I, about to move out on my own, hopefully this weekend. <laughs> oh, nice, okay. Well, congratulations on that. All right, we have questions, hold on. It's my brother. He wants to know what the different levels of spina bifida are. That is a Google question, Matt. <laughs> that is there a good There are so question. many of those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there are three that I know of. Um, types, as far mm -hmm. as the levels, um, I don't exactly know how to answer that. Uh, um, I can really only tell you about uh, the three uh, types that I know of, and I don't really know what uh, uh, what all is encompassed with those particular level um, types. There's um, spina bifida occulta, spina bifida myelomeningocele, mm -hmm. and then I just drew a blank on the last one. I don't know if you can help me with that or not. <laughs> I think occulta. it's just meningocele, isn't it? Menin there's meningocele, occulta, and one other, and I can't think of the name to save yeah. my life. I don't know. I should know. Mm -hmm. But like we were talking about earlier, um, the, the uh, location along the spinal cord determines mm -hmm. the severity of the injury. All right. Let's see. He has another question. Um, when you were on using crutches to walk, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think that people thought you were just recovering from an injury? No. I think that, uh, go ahead. I mean, was. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. And not good and didn't have like a disability or whatever. Well, you, maybe some of the kids did who didn't really know me that well, but I think that everybody that I grew up around, um, the kids and the adults, um, pretty well knew that uh, that my disability was from birth. Um, and if they didn't, people would ask that didn't know me. You know, they would ask. Uh, little kids would ask the normal innocent what happened kind of questions so you know it was it was pretty simple to 
explained that I've had it since birth and I can't walk. And, um, you know, it's just something that I was born with. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think that anybody ever really, at, at least they never said to me that um, they wondered if, uh, you know, if it was uh, not something from birth, something that uh, um, I was recovering from. And spina bifida is not really, spina bifida isn't something that you recover from. It's something that you live with. Right. And, it, uh, um, and I think uh, uh, people sometimes do wonder whether it's um, a progressive disease. And it, it's not a progressive disease in the classic sense that you would think of a progressive uh, disease. It's, right. But it's uh, only progressive in the sense of... Uh, things change as you get older and we all get older. So there's really no difference, you know, in that aspect. Right. Um, let's see. So I think my brother is just gonna take over this interview. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. My brother says, What's the biggest bar barrier you have experienced with spina bifida? That was actually one of my questions. Look at us. What is the biggest barrier? Biggest oh, barrier gosh. you have faced because of um, spina bifida? Well, um, uh, from a very practical standpoint, um, there's different barriers. And I don't know that um, I can classify any as the largest barrier. But uh, um, I give an example from from a very practical standpoint, reaching things, cause I sit. So you gotta figure out different ways to, to, to do things and to reach things and to get things and to maneuver and to move around and to, uh, um, to just get along within the house, uh, within your own home, within your own property, um, you know, in stores and in restaurants and other you know, in church, places of worship, um, mm -hmm. other businesses. And, you know, some businesses, um, uh, I think most of them are wheelchair accessible these days. Um, some mm -hmm. are wheelchair accessible um, to the whole spirit of the law. And some of them are accessible just uh, only to the letter of the law. And that's, uh, I, I guess that's a barrier because... Um, everybody's different and uh, uh, people's needs are different and uh, people's requirements are different and what may be as accessible to one person isn't necessarily accessible to another. Uh, I, I found barriers um, in that aspect because what may be accessible, uh, what may be thought of as accessible to one person, um, I may find very inaccessible to me. Right, exactly. That gets frustrating sometimes, but I've yeah. never found that. A, I haven't found that to be a huge problem yet. Yeah. And the biggest barrier I have found so far anyway um, is when I went to college. Um, mm -hmm. And I lived on campus mm -hmm. and I was always put on a third or fourth floor dorm. Oh, that, that had to be tough. And if the elevator didn't work. Then you didn't work. <laughs> then I didn't work. Um, and then there was a, a class that I had and it was on a second floor in a second floor floor mm -hmm. classroom. Mm -hmm. And um if that elevator didn't work, I mean I had um like they had to provide accommodations for that. Cause I couldn't right. just like miss class. Right. But right. it was just frustrating. Yeah, I think it's a matter of just the uh, people in authority and the people mm -hmm. that are helping you facilitate the experience just uh, to think through things a little bit more. I know when I was uh, in high school and junior high, um, all my classes, it was worked out for me to where they were all on the first floor. 
Right. So uh, that really wasn't uh, a problem for me. Now, um, in college, um, I had some classes that were um, on the second floor. But fortunately, at that point in my life, I was able to go up the steps. So it really wasn't, wasn't too bad. And we had elevators yeah. and whatnot. But I can understand how, how you know, if, uh, if your only access was via elevator and something happened, um, you had a problem. <laughs> right, exactly. And I lost my walking ability. I used to walk. Um, I lost mm -hmm. my walking ability like right after high school happened. Right. So I was trying to get used to college and all the stuff all at the same mm -hmm. time. And it was just really frustrating. Yeah, that seemed like a lot. It, it was all at once. I'm just providing good material. You're good, Matt. Keep providing that material. <laughs> Um, okay. Let's see. So, okay. This is actually one of my favorite questions that I've come up with so far. Okay. <laughs> most inspirational person in your life. It can oh, be anybody. <laughs> most inspirational person. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. The person, the people that, uh, um, Okay, I'm going to give you two answers. Okay. Um, uh, the most inspirational um, people, non-famous people, have been, I guess, my parents. Um, I guess the most inspirational person, um, famous-wise, um, and I can't think of his name, but he had cerebral palsy. And he had a show on the Travel Channel um, mm -hmm. where he demonstrated um, all the travel tips and techniques of a person with a disability who was able to, to go and do a travel international. And I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. I think I know who you're talking about. It was kind of like Zach something, maybe. I think his first name was Zach. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I can't mm -hmm. I can't remember his last name, but I know mm -hmm. who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Okay, since I talked a little bit, bit about college, um how was college if you went to college and if you didn't what did you do well, let's see i uh, i graduated um aum is a, a smaller um back in the day they called it a commuter college where people that's where i went where people came and uh then went back home at night there wasn't really um, there was a campus, but uh, there were only a few dorms. Uh, now it's a much bigger school. Yes, um, yes, it is. But uh, but I had a good uh, good good campus ministry that I was able to get involved in, and uh, we had a good basketball program, a uh, nationally recognized tennis program, um, and th so those were fun and uh, had some good instructors, made some good friends. And uh, yeah, my college experience was, uh, was a success, was quite good. good. I, of course, I do it over in some respects, but, but overall it was quite good. I actually am doing it over right now, but I'm doing all online classes, so. <laughs> <laughs> good. Um, let's see. Uh, my brother asks, have you ever been able to play a sport? Have I ever been able to play a sport? Um, not traditionally, um, but um, of course, we played dodgeball when I was a kid, you know, at PE and things like that. Um, and I participated um, in the Miracle League of Baseball 
um, league here in Montgomery that was started several years ago. And uh, so that was fun. So not traditionally, um, but I did, um, I was able to participate in uh, broadcasting and I was able to uh, uh, broadcast our home basketball games in high school over the PA system um, and be their, uh, their sort of court announcer, so to speak. Yeah. And did, did some home um, PA system broadcasting of our um, high school football games when I was there. Oh, okay. here's the thing. Um, again, not necessarily what you would think of as a traditional sport with a ball um, or what have you, but uh, I was able to go as, and I was the lone representative of the school. Um, so it wasn't really a team, but I was able to travel with some people to different weightlifting your internet connection is breaking up I give it a second and you should do that and weightlifting competitions and so it's the weightlifting aspect on the, uh, the tradition and i'll let you tell me when to start back yeah you can start it's back okay I'm not sure where we left off, but I'll just go ahead and uh, uh, talk about how I, I didn't play sports in the traditional sense, but uh, I was involved in our sports and sports casting and was able to, to uh, do the PA system for our uh, football and basketball games when I was in high school. And then again, not with a ball, but I was able to represent our high school in weightlifting competitions throughout the state. And sort of that was sort of my niche. I, I really enjoyed that. And uh, I actually got pretty good at it and uh, um, still enjoy it to this day as much as I can. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about jobs. Um, so what is your job now? And what was your dream, dream job growing up? Um, well, my dream job, and I actually did a little bit of that um, locally. So that was fun. Um, right now, um, of course, it's the off season, but uh, I work part time for the Montgomery Biscuits, the local minor league baseball team here in Montgomery in the customer service. Gotcha. So we keep me involved in sports and around You're breaking up again. Give it a second. Really enjoy. You should be good. Mm -hmm. 
be plugged in to uh, to everything that's going on sports wise. Okay, my my brother asked another question. Um, I can get back to the podcast. Okay. Um, he said, "Faith is obviously a big part of your life. Have you been able to use your experience to share your testimony?" Okay. Not sure where. Okay. Lots of people, especially kids, would like questions, and um, then we're able to talk. And uh, I remember one specific incident um, happened a couple of years ago, actually, um, where I had an injury to my foot um, mm-hmm. that took, gosh, a couple. And you, Sarah, you I may remember re- this. Yeah. You may remember this, yeah, because uh, I actually posted it. Um, but this kid comes in, comes in my station in the gate. Uh, with his dad, and then he probably was six, seven, eight, uh, seven, eight, nine years old. I don't know. But uh, he looks at my foot and he goes, um, I'm sorry about your foot. The Lord's going to take care of you. I know he will. And uh, well, about that time, you talk about ugly crying. I came really, really close. <laughs> so um, anyways, so that, but that opened up conversation. And uh, was really nice, and uh, uh, there's been more examples of that throughout throughout uh, life. You know, you just got to be patient and look for them. Right. Yeah. Oops. Okay. Um. Have you been to any spina bifida related events, either recently or? Uh, you know, I've had opportunities yeah. to. Um, not specifically spina bifida related, um, but I did play wheelchair tennis with uh, um, with the Dream Court mm-hmm. here in Montgomery, and was able to uh, go to a couple of uh, tennis tournaments, um, and that featured people um, playing wheelchair tennis. So um, not specifically spina bifida related, but uh, definitely dis- disability related. Disability related, yeah. Right. Okay, um, kind of related to that. Are you part of any organizations, spina bifida related or disability related? Well, um, not as far as uh, um, um, not as far as participating, but I did work um, for an organization uh, that was disability related. Uh, my for independent living, um, which was a nonprofit whose uh, purpose was to help people with disabilities to be able to make their own choices relative to how they wanted to live, whether it um, be in some sort of uh, assisted living facility or uh, on their own. Um, and of course, as you, as you would imagine, lots of people would, if they could choose to live on their own. So we, right. uh, as best we could help them find resources to be able to do that. Okay, that actually is a really good like feed into my next question. Do you good. live on your own and what does that look like? <laughs> um, I have my own house. Um, currently I'm with my parents. I've sustained a, um, a pressure sore injury that uh, they got out of hand. And uh, long story short, I needed uh, a little bit more assistance than living by myself was gonna provide me. So I'm staying with them for the time being, but I do have my own house. Um, and prior to the injury, uh, um, it's all on one level. Um, and I re- uh, um, assist things that uh, you might, I guess, in a way, it was sort of already set up for me. And uh, I still have it. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to at least 
get back to some semblance of normalcy somewhere here, hopefully in the near future. Yeah. I, um, I just signed a lease for an apartment. Oh, you and, did? Yeah. And then two days later, I had surgery. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and I had a lot of restrictions put on me. So I had to, um, I haven't, I have had the apartment for a month now, almost. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I haven't been able to actually live in it. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, um, I'm hopefully moving are, this weekend, though. So, good deal. So, uh, the surgery was that something that uh, had to happen quickly, or it did not. But I've been pushing it off. Oh, okay. Um, and um. We had just gotten a date for it, and then the apartment decided to come open. Gotcha. And it was like the type of apartment that I wanted. It was like it's like an open concept, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't want to lose it. Right, so right. I went ahead and signed the lease. Well, hopefully you'll be able to get in that pretty soon and and uh, enjoy it like you want to. Oh. I did ask another question. Uh, Matt said, have you always had a system of support and resources to reach out to when you were injured? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I've got a good, uh, a good network of family and friends that, uh, that I can reach out to um, when I need to. In fact, uh, currently I'm not driving um, because uh, to be frank, I'm just not strong enough right now uh, based on still having being in recovery from being in the hospital. So I've got uh, four or five people that I call on and uh, they're able to come by and we'll do errands and things of that nature. So um, currently life takes more planning than it used to um, and more arranging than it used to. Um, and having to have more set plans than uh, it used to, and that I, and more than I'd like, but uh, but I've got a good system going. I think. Good. Okay. Since you mentioned driving, mm -hmm. um, my brother asked a question. Um, okay. Do you, Do you use hand controls to drive? I do use hand controls to drive. In fact, uh, if. Uh, um, if um, my car wasn't um, parked in a position where I could um, get to it, I could show you the hand controls. But basically, on mine, it's just a bar that connects to the steering column and then two bars that connect to the gas and the brake. And so when I'm sitting, if you can imagine, um, theoretically, your hands go at the two and 10 positions on the steering wheel, uh, mine, my left hand goes on the throttle and the gas and my right hand um, holds the steering wheel. So I push the bar down towards the floor for the brake and then pull it down uh, for the gas. Yeah, that's what I have in my van. Right. It's a pretty simple uh, contraption. Yeah, once you get used to it, it's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay, um, let's see. Any advice for someone living with spina bifida? And also to go with that, has anyone given you advice about living with spina bifida? Good question. Um, yeah, um, the people that have given me advice, uh, you know, a lot of times with uh, what I couldn't do, and so um, it was impressed upon me to focus on what I could do and to build on that. Yeah. I guess just to sort of, uh, that advice kind of piggybacks on what I would tell other people is, um, first of all, don't be afraid to ask for assistance. But um, along those same lines, um, don't let people tell you that you 
can't do something. Because um, if you really have a goal and you really want to do something, uh, you may need some assistance and you may need a little, uh, a little more assistance than the next guy. But don't, don't let somebody tell you that you can't do it. You know, the only people that uh, strike out in this world are the people that don't step up to the plate. So don't, don't, let, don't let somebody try to discourage you and tell you that because you've got spinal bifida or because of other system of advice that you absolutely can't. Because if you've got a goal in mind, you can. Um, and just bear in mind that, that whether you've got a disability or not, um, we all need assistance in one way or another. Right. And that's something that I had a really hard time, um, like understanding, I guess. I have mm -hmm. a really hard time like asking for help mm -hmm. because I think I can do everything on my own. <laughs> uh, I have that same problem sometimes too. I'm getting better at it, but I still, I still think that I can uh, uh, do more than, than, uh, than I can. I still think that I can do everything, you know, by myself without assistance. Yeah, especially after surgeries and all that stuff. Yeah, and I've, I've had to, I've had to learn that there's no shame in asking for help. Right. Okay, um, let's see. How do you advocate for yourself? And then how did you advocate when you were like smaller, younger? There, that's the word. <laughs> well, when I was smaller, when I was a kid, um, I was quiet and uh, I let my parents advocate for me. Um, they, both, they both knew how to do that <laughs> pretty well. Um, as I've gotten older and as I've... Um, sort of found my voice, so to speak. Um, I've got no problem advocating for myself and standing up for what I need and asking for what I need and challenging people um, with uh, with things that uh, uh, I need and things that are done that I don't necessarily think are right. Things that need and I think there's a way to do that that's kind and respectful and uh, not pushy, but uh, there's also a way to um, we'll get the point across with, without being ornery. And I'm pretty good at advocating for myself and standing up for what I need. Yeah. I had an issue with it until probably about college, honestly, mm -hmm. because up until then, I always had my mom there. Mm -hmm. And then college came and I lived on campus for three and a half years, somewhere around there. Right. Um, and I didn't have my mom there 24-7. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had to advocate for like accommodations for classes, um, my dorm room, um, literally just getting around campus like <laughs> yeah i think advocating for yourself makes you stronger it does it yeah helps, sure. helps you find yourself helps you with self-confidence and knowing that uh your voice matters right yeah let's see um Uh -huh. My other favorite question. Oh, okay. <laughs> Best and worst part about living with spina bifida and then just like some of the struggles that you have faced. Oh, gosh. Um, uh, best and worst parts. Okay, the best parts are the, um, the parking accommodations, uh, seating accommodations, at sporting events and concerts and I guess the worst parts would be um, pain management sometimes um, and um, 
strength um, strength uh, difficulties sometimes. Um, you know, just the normal physical um, day to day issues that come along with uh, not being able to um, to move and walk and go and do like a person that uh, can walk uh, right. does. Oh. Sorry, my broadcast went off on my phone. Yep. Back up there. We're good. Um, let's see. Okay. Is there anything else that you would like to specifically talk about? Because all of my questions have been answered. Uh, no, not really. Just, uh, you know, to reiterate, don't let anybody tell you that you can't do something. Uh, um, and don't be afraid to um, use your voice to stand up for yourself and, and advocate, uh, you know, in a respectful manner, uh, what you need. It, uh, you'll find that it makes you stronger, and uh, you'll find that people are um, more oftentimes than you might think receptive to what you've got to say. All right. Yeah. Let me see if my brother has any more questions. Matt, this is your last chance for questions, if you have any more. Let's see. Does Matt have any more questions? He's the one that usually asks all the questions in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> when he gets a chance to watch them, it's pretty great. He said that he's good. He said, thank you for sharing all this information. Yes, sure. thank you for letting me do this like spur of the moment. <laughs> well, hey, you're quite welcome. I'm, I'm glad to, uh, to help and come on anytime. Sounds good. Okay. I will keep you in mind for another broadcast then. All right, guys. I'll see you in my next broadcast. Thank you again for letting me interview you.